This book is basically like consuming my life. classics era has begun in december i read two classics and if you watched my J my december wrap up you know that like i have this fascination with 19th century um literature and black history you already know that i'm currently reading market walker's jubilee i'm on page 180 and it's about 500 yeah 500 pages this book follows viri who is the daughter of an enslaved black woman and the plantation owner and follows her from antebellum pre-civil war through reconstruction part two which i'm going to start later today follows like it's going to be the civil war eras or civil war time periods this book is not easy to read it's not hard to read i feel like her writing style is straightforward it really does feel like i feel that oral history like she was talking about her grandmother telling her this story like it feel i feel that oral history and then thrown in her prose because she is a poet margaret walker is a poet just some of the things are not enjoyable to read but it's important so i'm really um I'm really glad I'm reading this right now. So I'll continue on to reading this. I think it'll take me at least another week. All right, that's good. I probably could have done without the agave. It's like a chamomile twist tea. This is my first time trying it, but I like it. So I read about 20 pages and I feel like it's moving faster now because it's like less, the, it's more like the war is picking up and that kind of thing. So like the pace of the story is picking up um, and it's less like, day-to-day -day traumatic things so that's pretty interesting but um if I wake up early and I can read before work tomorrow that'll be awesome but if not I will see you tomorrow night when I get off from work We are out and look at downtown. It's so cute. And we're about to start 5K training. Also, we're in the car because it's the coldest day of winter so far and we're scared. <laughs> I don't see how people record. I wanted to record, but I'm like, as you can see, it's a lot. But I'm glad I finished it more than anything. I'm not even glad that I did it for my health. I'm glad that I can check this off my to-do list because I did it. I did it all. <laughs> how to say it other than this book is basically like consuming my life um I love it so much it's honestly becoming one of my favorite books and we only have a third left so unless something drastic happens but it's still a true story too but this is becoming one of my favorite books but that's not what we're here for right now I would like to 
do a little book unboxing. Mostly classics in here, uh, a couple historical fiction, one contemporary. I started a new job and I hadn't been working for like six or seven months so I went a, lot of, a little crazy but I'm not allowing myself to buy any more books until at least February because I need to like, give myself time to actually read some of these books or definitely more books before I allow myself to keep collecting any. So don't let this fool you. I'm just in a moment. Ooh, look at these pages. I love that. This is Love Songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. Oh, it has Oprah's sticker. But I really, it's basically a, a it's historical fiction about following this um, African-American family. And this author, Honoré Fanon Jeffers, is a poet, also set in Georgia, just like, just like Jubilee. Like, I'm not on thinking, mm, just, I'm not gonna go on a tangent, but we're gonna hold that thought on historical fiction in 19th century Georgia for black people for another day. So this is the last paragraph of the description. To come to terms with her own identity, Ailey embarks on a journey through her family's past, uncovering the shocking tales of generations of ancestors, indigenous, black and white, in the deep south. Along the way, Ailey must learn to embrace her full heritage, a legacy of oppression and resistance, bondage and independence, cruelty and resilience that is the story and the song of America itself. Let's see how many pages this one is. Ooh, it's more than 700 pages. I'm not, surprisingly, I'm not intimidated by that at all. The historical fiction and classics eras continue. And this also is another one. Look how beautiful this one is. Beast of a Little Land by Juhia Kim. This is 1917. So young, so this was definitely during um, Japanese occupation in Korea. And so this is another epic story of love, war, and redemption set against the back drop of the Korean independence movement. That's all I need to know. Also, if you have interest in this, I I watched Mr. Sunshine and while I didn't love the love story in it, but it actually wasn't bad. I just didn't like the age difference. Um that that show was like a great like introduction honestly to all that all like this time period. Um yeah, like I think this is a good campaign and I haven't even read this yet. Oh, I picked up Free Food for Millionaires by Min Jin Lee, who's also one of my favorite writers. I started the book on the plane, but I just wasn't in the mood for that at that moment. And just especially how long it was, I just was like, I'm not in the mood to commit to this. But it follows Casey Hahn. It just basically follows, um, I don't know if the daughter is an immigrant, but she's definitely daughters of Korean immigrants trying to fit into this lifestyle. Like she graduated, or she, yeah, she graduated from Princeton. She has this white boyfriend and just trying to basically be in these two different worlds. Also, I picked up Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. And this one I'm actually planning to give to my mom. Um, she loved A Man Called Ove. I still haven't read it yet. I also want to read that one too, but this is, this turned into a movie or a series that um, I don't like TV as much, like newer TV, um, but I actually might watch that one. But yeah, so this follows a bunch of different people who are inside like a bank robbery while a bank robbery happens. It follows the different people. And I think I definitely want to read it first and then give it to her or she can sell it or do whatever. So here are two books I picked up at Barnes & Noble, which were quite affordable. Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux and then The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. And these are both, well, okay, so I'll admit, so I was gonna say I these are both books that I've seen um in like the movie format because you know like after I watched a Christmas or listen no yeah I did listen to a Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens after that I'm like oh well let me just go check out all those childhood um movies that I loved so I do remember of course watching the it might have been Disney Disney had a hold on me for quite a many years but yeah so it might have been the disney version but it was definitely an animated version of the hunchback of notre dame and then the phantom of the opera i was gonna say i've seen the phantom of the opera but no i saw the phantom of the megaplex which i did enjoy oh a collection of sonia sanchez's poems so sonia sanchez is one of my favorite poets and what is fascinating about sonia sanchez is i didn't know it's like, I feel like I've heard her name before, but I really wasn't introduced to her, really like started researching her and really like, oh my goodness, this is like somebody I love. Until I watched, it was like the whatever year the Toni Morrison documentary came out in like, it was like a select theater, just went to this indie theater in Atlanta or it's like one part of Atlanta. And it was just really cool. But yeah, that's when Sonya Sanchez was crying in the documentary. I was like, wait, who is this? Because I feel connected to you. I don't know, I really like her. I really like her, Nikki Giovanni. There's so many black poets that I love. And one of the books, hopefully it's here, will actually 
display that a little bit more it'll, it'll give you like a little more proof but yeah Sonia Sanchez collected poems oh this one's not for me but so I'm like I can't just buy books for me this one is one of like probably the one I was most excited about um and I keep talking in this video I just keep talking about 19th century black literature and life and what is that without black women's uh literature and writing and so this is the portable 19th century african-american women writers um and this is edited like i feel like all of the black classics i've been finding or seeing even ones i didn't get while i was in barnes and nobles uh like the penguin classics um is from or like edited by henry Louis gates jr which i find interesting portable 19th century african-american women writers is the most comprehensive anthology of its kind an extraordinary range of voices offering the expressions of african-american women in print before during and after the civil war this is a good like this is exactly what i i can't even speak so you know that's exactly what jubilee does in a fiction format a narrative format but this is just a collection of real stories as well um, like there's one story to talk about her experience in the Fisk Jubilee Singers, well-known writers, so like Sojourner Truth, um, Harriet Jacobs, centering Black American women writers from this time period that I am in love with researching right now is so exciting. So I'm putting it on the list for February because I actually 100% want to dive into it right now, but I'm waiting on a book from the library to come in. Is Jubilee is Margaret Walker's like nonfiction of like it's essays of like why she or how she wrote Jubilee but then also um a couple other essays so I want that to be my companion that I read this month but this is like February to be read like priority I'm so excited look at that photo look at that photo if I didn't get any other book this was the one this is the one so I just have two more I think I know what this one is I think I did. I was right, but I didn't tell you. So this is Black Nature, Four Centuries of African-American Nature Poetry. Camille T. Dungy has selected 180 poems from 93 poets that provide unique perspectives on American social and literary, literary history to broaden our concept of nature poetry and African-American poets. Included are poets writing out of slavery, reconstruction, the Harlem Renaissance, the Black Arts Movement, and late 20th and early 21st century african-american poetic movements something i used to do last year is like i would there's like i think it's like poets.org or one of those sites where it's like just a bunch of poems and, and you can filter like the topic and i would just go look at nature poems but of course i wanted to i mean walt whitman and robert frost like you know like all those people are cool but sometimes i just want a black poem <laughs> so i'm excited about this and i literally didn't know like i'm just I'm not only, I'm excited that I have it, but I'm just excited that it exists and I was able to find it. And I'll be introduced to so many new poets too. One last one. Oh yeah! <laughs> Nicholas Nickleby, N Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens. So I read A Christmas Carol. I love The Christmas Carol. I'm shocked that it's took, taken me this long, but I'm, I'm actually going to get into Charles Dickens. So the way that this worked in the way that I'm handling basically all classics is I read so they have it at the library and um I read like the first couple pages to make sure like I did enjoy Christmas Carol and the writing the writing was like whoa, whoa I was surprised that it was accessible to me um but I still want to make sure before I buy any book that I either like it or it's accessible to be like I can actually read it because I mean of course I can sell this but what's the point in getting it and I'm like I don't know I don't know what this man is talking about so I'm glad I wanted to try this one out so I, of course I got into Charles Dickens and reading Christmas Carol because of Comfy Cozy Up so she suggested I read this one first or I think that's what she suggested either if you're new I don't think it was like directly to me but I think it's because if you were new that's like the best one to start with so that's 10 books added to the collection I have let's see I'm on page 318, 317, and the book ends on page 502. So I think I'm gonna finish this in the next couple of days. And then yeah, next time you see me, I'll be updating you on this. And I won't do a review until I've read it twice, but I'll definitely be able to give you my first thoughts upon completion. Okay, I'm not actually done, but I did want to talk to you because I finished part two. So part two was the Civil War years. Now we're talking more and more about like Viri, Viri's relationships and like the decisions she's making. 
some of them I'm like girl like this is peak learning history through fiction I can trace one line of my family to being born on this plantation I think it was like 1865 like it was like a husband and wife that were born on this plantation in 1865 and yeah so it was kind of helped me understand like how some people were still there in like not even just how but like why and like some people were like were leaving and some people were escaping and it was just very one of my favorite characters is brother Zeke and man that man was on the move on to the reconstruction era um and I'm honestly I'm really enjoying the personal stuff of that's probably why the civil war era was probably more interesting I feel like I got to yeah I'm very I'm looking forward to the personal stuff getting more about Viri and maybe her children in the reconstruction era and it's called they call it reconstruction and reconstruction and it's aftermath okay and then also a cool thing i really liked i'm just going back through it i'm not even reading like ahead i'm just going to look back at stuff it's really cool to see like how they celebrated christmas like how very celebrated christmas with her kids and like what um like one person was thinking about like what would make it feel like christmas for him um there's just there's another like i'm just like this book we should have read this book in high school like there's nothing in it that like we read there's ours were watching god so like i don't see i mean it could have not been on my teacher's radar but like i don't see why that isn't something that also could have been this could have been something that was also read too oh, i like this line too the summer then was like an idol a season of peace when all the agitation of the violent world around them seems suspended and they felt secure and to think i was like mm, i'm only gonna read a few pages no margaret walker said not on my watch in the second and third part we really get to see more of her as like as a person and personality i can see how the way she grew up like growing up enslaved but also growing up working inside the house and cooking impacted how she viewed like other black people whether they how she viewed other black people other enslaved people whether they were working in the fields or other black people that she sees and meets outside who act like a certain way it's very fascinating to see that impact um on her i have so many thoughts they are i don't know how i feel obviously i love the book um and i'm definitely gonna reread it but like i don't know what to think so this story <laughs> this story the promise of, re of reconstruction and like just the journey of trying to find a place to live and like have a home after freedom i'm like i'm s oh my gosh okay initial thoughts love very very i very i love her um she had some i was just like i'm this book was so good i think i'm really interested in seeing what's fact versus fiction in the acknowledgments randall ware is um the real name of margaret walker's great grandfather because this very is her great grandmother but i'm interested to in see like narrative wise what she changed um or if this is all like her the story like the true story um and like for most of this book definitely during the first yeah definitely during the first third margaret walker's grandma so basically margaret walker's grandma was born on that plantation too so i can see how she remembers that plus the stories that her mom told um through basically all of this like so i can see how all this was remembered and in addition to like her research or whatever, cause she talked about the records of Randall Ware, her great grandfather and all the stuff he did in Georgia. Like she just went through so much and dealt, dealt with so much that, so like oh, there's a lot of times I didn't necessarily agree with like her thought or not disagree with her thought process, but I just didn't like some of the stuff she said. Um, but then there was sometimes I love some of the stuff she said, like, um, like she was saying, oh, I like this one. She was arguing with her husband and she was like, like he was like i'm not like what you gonna do but like oh now you're talking all this stuff or whatever and this is obviously summarizing with 2022 language and then he she's like i cover every inch of ground i'm standing on that's what i mean well like you're not like i'm not 
folded on this essentially and i really like that and i like what she said about um to her son about um she said folks with a loving heart don't ever need a doctor um and then i like she really did move with love and i know there's a lot of times that people like there's like pe asking black people to forgive white people for these harms that they do instead of like taking just taking white people to task but i really like the her view because it's not like the hate in our heart is gonna solve anything make us like die faster there's at the end she's we're talking about very um she was in that night a spark of light that was ne neither of the earth nor September air but eternal fire. Yet it was not that she stood there in pride for them to worship her or be in awe of her deep integrity. She was only a living sign and mark of all the best that any human being could hope to become. In her ob obvious capacity for love, redemptive and forgiving love, she was alive and standing on the highest peaks of her time and human personality. Peasant and slave, unlettered and untutored, she was nevertheless the best true example of the motherhood of her race, an ever-present assurance that nothing could destroy a people whose sons had had come from her loins. So yeah, I think oh, it's so good. I can't wait to reread this. Oh, and then she was talking about how one of the people, somebody was talking about he would buy her house or whatever. And she was like, big house don't matter to me. I was a slave in a big house. And I know that don't mean warm, loving home and a peaceful night's sleep. Your money was always going to buy me everything, even my, me and my freedom. But it was always a dream. I told you it was nothing but a dream. This book is so good. Like, I, I'm about to just go into a deep dive um, of, like, Margaret Walker, this story. I That book hasn't come from the library. And I don't about Margaret Walker, her essays about how I wrote Jubilee um and all that stuff so and i don't want to purchase it but i really want to read it like right now like there's there's no kindle version like it's either paperback online library like it's not like barnes and Noble. well i had didn't look at barnes and noble but you know like i hadn't seen it the, the little day-to-day -day things that people would do like sleep under the stars when they couldn't sleep take their stuff outside the herbs that they will go um and and use like the things that the specific things they would do the way they were sitting on the porch and um watching the kids um the way that they were oh the the whole the way that they were like brought they we were brought to go to to lynchings um the way that they were like so it's not even just the horrors it was a lot of the day-to-day -day things that they would do um the 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 remedies like the the different like um herbs to heal diseases the way they celebrated christmas um how like how they got different places i love this book so much i'm gonna reread it um i'll be able to have more like a full thoughts on during my um november wrap up no not November. in my january wrap up government 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 you say i didn't heard that word government so i'm sick to my stomach the government gonna give you this the government gonna give you that the government gonna give every one of us 40 acres and a mule the government got good land the government will help you get settled the government gonna have free schools for the colored sir does you want to know what the government done give me nothing not nary nickels worth of nothing do you hear me i'm glad margaret walker shared this same story because you get to understand what all of these this time period was really like not the watered down version the whitewash version the hollywood version the true story and you know they got drama in there too like relationship and like family drama so definitely worth my time and i'm gonna go into the deep dive and basically stalk margaret walker and her life and her family so thank you for watching see you next week for another reading vlog and have a good weekend